Howdy folks, Abyssal Tech here in a, another fine, yet slightly damp morning here in D-Rail Valley. And as you might have guessed from the dramatic, exceptionally dramatic camera panning, I got a bit of a train here. Without the locomotives, this train is over a kilometer long, which is about 3,300 feet for those people who uh, prefer American. Close to 2,000 tons, full 68 cars. And I'm going to take it to the harbor via the mountain road. Hence why you notice I have a DE6, the railway slug, and another DE6. This isn't just for pulling power, because I actually... A single D6 can get this started, although not that far. But I'll need both pulling power and braking power, because uh, after a certain point, a lot of this is downhill. Alright, so let's go ahead and put it in gear. get started. D6s are something else when it comes to pulling power. But they are most definitely not a shunting locomotive. They're also not a cheap locomotive. The fact that just putting this train together with nine work orders, yeah. I'm not gonna make a single time bonus. Took a nice photo opportunity here, and photo. Those of you who watched my video on the railway slug will remember that one of the benefits to having it is the extra traction motors at low RPM take a lot of the extra current from your locomotive itself and spread it out because there's no engine on that thing, just motors. Meaning you can get a lot of extra pulling power, once again, at low art, low speeds without really too much amp. I'm barely tweaking there. Alright, let's get this train moving. Shut the door because, well, I don't really need it. it feels pretty... The cab's kind of nice on these things. Got these nice windows. And once you know the key bindings, you can actually control the train just by standing here like this. But, uh... It feels like there should be other stuff here. I don't know. I'm not sure what type of uh, locomotive this is based on. Although there's thousands jet somewhat like it. You've all We've all seen them. So, if anyone uh, in my 
hundreds of thousands of followers has seen what fit, seen the inside of these. Feel free to let me know what it's like. All right, doing almost thirty here. Temps are good. Amps are good. Can't even see the other end of my train due to the fog. Hmm. Something I have to check on when I start uh, a heavy pull from the standing. Something near its limits. Is it going to burn rich like a normal diesel would? Yeah, look at that. I'm s my caboose in the back is still not even on the bridge there. Yeah, this is big train. Strap faster. Slowly creeping up a bit. So one thing you got to be aware of, when a train goes around a turn, there's going to be some friction implied, imparted by the turn. Better get into position here real quick. So, going through a curve will impart friction, which will slow your train, which is drag, which slows your train down a little bit. That's fair, you think. It's not that big of a deal. You notice it more when you're not active, your motors aren't actively engaged. But you got to train this long, and I have a full kilometer of train dragging behind me. across a lot of cur major curves. That's why I have all of this pulling power, but yet I'm not even doing 30 kph here. Why are you flashing? You're not supposed to be flashing. Why are you so very much hotter? Looks like my temps are stable for now, so.
Well, it looks like you can't roll this thing out as heavy as I want to, so just back off a bit. Hmm. Dang, you could zoom out pretty far on this. Wow, the end of my train is all the way back there in like the upper left corner. This is still impressive. Oh, I got uh, some turn system coming up here. Which way do I go? Okay, I want to continue in this circuit here. Okay, that light is out. I didn't re fully realize it was engaged. Okay, good, I'm still in this circuit. Get a little bit more power. Now uh, things have cooled down there in the back. You know, the fact that I could zoom out like this with this many cars this far away from where my avatar actually is and everything rendered and the game isn't having seizures is really impressive. Starting to get over 40 here, so that's where you see uh, air cooling effects on your train really starting to take, kick in. So you know what that means. More speed. More power. And sound more just because I can. Ain't quite as cool as the steam engine's whistle, but uh, hey, 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 still fun. Real quick adjustment on some music volume here.
All right, so it looks like we're pretty much clear of most of the uphill. Okay, so my engine is not happy. Things have gotten a little warm back there. It seems you could only use one. The rail slug only really works on one locomotive at a time to get its uh, kind of cooling benefits. And now that we're speeds dropping, yeah. Not entirely good. I'm just going to have to suck it up though and accept it. I don't want to really drop below 20 too far. Yeah, but I can't accept running into it. slopes, but hopefully this is either somewhat neutral grade through here, because I've never done this route through here. I know that if I go that way, it continues to go up. Looks like this, it continues either levels off or uh, slight down slope.
yeah, it looks like it slopes down a little bit. That'll be good. Now let me get some speed going. So then it'll be my big concern not to get too much speed. Looks like he band's still in the yellow. Somewhat anticipated that. Yep, I got a slight a 1.4 downgrade. No, 1.9. Ooh. Yeah, I'm starting to pick up speed. off a little more on the motors. They did a good pull. all the way off on the motors because one of the things you have to keep in mind is that speed limits will apply to sections of track behind you as well so I got a big chunk of my train that's under a lot more of it that's still in the bend also it should be coming out here soon and I got a 40 section. Okay, so. Oh dear. I appear to have made a bit of a mess. Well, that's what uh, reloading is for. I honestly have no idea what happened. Real quick, make sure this is before every. Yep, this is the curve where everything exploded. Uh, yeah, because probably because I was doing almost 50 when I hit this.
Because the other biggest problem with a train this large is your brakes. Take forever to depressurize. In fact, sit tight. I'll be ready. I'll uh, come back to you when it's ready. Okay, we're back. Took a little longer than I'd like, but the brakes have been released and the train is moving. This is just on gravity alone, so we're starting to pick up speed a little bit. We get to just over 20. I'm going to put on a little notch of the uh, dynamic brake here. I was hoping the overall drag of everything would uh, help me out, but... So I'm not entirely sure how dynamics brakes work right just yet. All I know is I don't want to go faster than this. That's happening. Although, yeah, it looks like I've successfully navigated through that curve. And there we have the lovely Goods Factory, the Goods Factory Bridge. Three, two, one, photo.
All right, so we passed the the end of the train is now passing the goods factory. Looks like we got some nasty curves up here, but I'd say we're close to half out, halfway through, at about half hour runtime. Everyone loves how short my videos are, I'm sure so. And then again, you don't really watch this stuff for short videos, you watch this for trains. Some train fan service right there. Okay, so speed limit of 40. I'm doing under 40, so we're good, we're good. Seriously, uh, these longer videos, is this like uh, some of that ASMR stuff for you guys? Where you just got some trains, being trains, running through, doing train stuff. So I'm going to take the dynamic brake off, see what happens with my speed. Well, best I could tell, the train's still all put together, so... Huh, you got a neat little castle up here. I have to ask my wife later on what type of uh, castle this is. She's huge into uh, medieval castles, architecture, all that. She'd probably tell us. Do not want to be going over 43, but I know it's about to come up here. Is that another one? Huh. Is 
So, I've been kind of starting to get the feeling that Derail Valley is someplace in Europe. From what I know of the real life examples of engines these things are based off of, the ones in the game are based off of, almost all of them are European style engines. prevalence of castles. Not something you really get on my side of the pond. Which is a bloody shame. To use some of the uh, British terminology there. Ooh, that tree's got some lean on it. Well, there's certainly to a turn. Keeping the train moving at about 40 kilometers an hour. Not the fastest I could go. But truth be told, with these rail lines you on a train this large, you should not be going really over too much over 40. Hard enough seeing what you're back in. Like, IRL. Better shut that door there. Good. Put the water in. IRL, you could not, without any, someone being in the back of the train, know what's going on back there. That's one of the things that makes train derailments so usually makes train derailments in real life worse. The train, the engineer in the front doesn't actually know that the train's derailed. We've got some gnarly curves coming up. Because he can't see it. And unless he gets some kind of alert, come off the power there. Some, unless something alerts him, like someone in, like for example, someone in a caboose in the back with a walkie-talkie. Be like, hey, uh, did we stop? No. Well, I just did. Crap. Unless you got something going on like that. Another thing, safety features that you do have on modern trains, been around for a while, is the pump here for the pneumatic brakes. It actually generates air pressure to open the brakes. The brakes naturally go full close with the absence of full air pressure. So for some reason, you have some cars break away from the front of the train. Once they're cut off from the source of air, the brakes automatically snap closed. Pretty good safety feature, I'd say. 
probably is limited to quite a bit of damage from derailments or just issues with maintenance. Alright, that was the first big curve. Not too bad, not too shabby, not too shabby. The other side of my train is on... The back end of my train is on the other side of a literal mountain. Not a figurative mountain, literal. Picking up a bit of speed from the down slope. That's okay, just keep an eye on it. Listen to the jams. Some random Japanese girl. Okay, I haven't seen any 40 signs, so I think I'm still good. Unfortunately, I don't want to zoom out to uh, take advantage of actually being able to look at the back of my train. Just because speed limits you, because I am about to get into the harbor. Get that speed down back under control here. Because if it's one thing I've learned about these video game physics engines is the further they get from the play, things get interactions get from the player, or the more interactions there are, they get a little squirrely.
Let everybody know big train moving through. Especially because, yeah, yeah, I got a lot of train moving in here. So the harbor is a good uh, measuring point because you actually get to see, because everyone knows how big the harbor is as far as its various places to put train cars. So we be, should be getting a pretty good idea of how big the harbor is here. There you can see uh, my caboose is just rounding that final curve into what is it? I think the C, the E yards. And I'm almost by the it around us. Okay. Good spot to end it here. Turn off that little bell first. One kilometer, one derailment, two thousand tons. All right, well, that's a good spot to end it here. This has been Abyssal Tech. If you've lasted this far into my video without uh, expiring, thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, eventually, the channel might grow. It might not. Let me know anything. Uh, feel free to let me know anything you want on a C. Do we want more big trains, or do you want to see me speed down the rails at like 90 kilometers an hour carrying like three cars because I could do that too all right well take care have a pleasant day